Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Inuzor Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about uh, random variables with continuous distribution. Um, primarily, I would like to explain how to describe the distribution in more uh, mathematical terms uh, using the cumulative uh, distribution function. Um, this lecture is part of the course of advanced mathematics for um, high school students, for teenagers actually, um, and it's presented on unisor.com uh, together with many um, uh, aspects of um, educational process like notes for each lecture, um, there are exams for um, enrolled students and I do recommend you to watch this lecture from the unisor.com website um, even if you found it somewhere else like YouTube or anywhere else. Uh, just primarily for these extra uh, things which the website contains. In this particular case, it's definitely detailed notes which make sense to read before or after you listen to the lecture. All right, so we are talking about a um, function uh, which is called cumulative distribution function uh, for um, continuous uh, random variables, random variables with continuous distribution of probabilities and then we will apply it to discrete random variables as well. So, um, let me use the same example I was using in the previous lecture where I introduced the uh, continuously distributed random variables. Let's say you have a tennis ball and you're trying to determine its weight. Uh, well, we will assume that um, the instruments you have have absolute precision and uh, also the same um, kind of tennis balls which we were uh, considering in the previous lecture, the ones which have um, certain variation in, in weight from minimum 50 to maximum 60 grams. Um, so you are measuring the ball and uh, well the balls are manufactured by different manufacturers etc. So basically there is some distribution of probabilities to find the ball of any particular weight or within certain range of weights. Now what's important about um, uh, variables, uh, random variables which are distributed continuously like in this particular case from 50 to 60 is that the probability to have any specific value probability of our random variable C which is the weight of the tennis ball to be equal exactly 55 grams this probability is equal to zero as well as the probability uh, to find any um, other specific value however if you are talking about the range let's say 52 C 56 this will be greater than zero so any range has the weight or probability greater um, than zero, but any specific value always has zero. In a way, it's um, absolutely analogous to, let's say you have a segment and you are calculating the lengths. Now the length of each interval within this segment is definitely greater than zero, but the length of the one particular point on this segment is equal to zero and as I told many times the probability and the length or, or weight or anything else they're all related they're all measures measure has certain qualities in mathematics uh, for instance um, measures are additive um, and in this particular case as well as in this it's exactly the same thing in continuously distributed um, random variables, the probability to have any specific value would be zero as well as the length of, a, uh, in, of an interval where beginning and end coincide is equal to zero. But if you just open any interval uh, where end and uh, beginning and end are different, then you will have certain non-equal to zero probability as well as non-equal to zero lengths. And if you are increasing this range you will increase the length and you will increase the probability up to the maximum 
uh, which is in our case we have decided that our ball can be in this boundaries and the probability is equal to one because there are no other balls but those which are within this weight uh, interval all right so now the question is how can I describe the distribution of probabilities of this particular random variable well obviously it's not easy because what I would like to know is I would like to know this for any a and b between 50 and 60. So for any interval of values, I would like to know the probability because that's exactly what means to know the distribution of probabilities. Now, that's obviously not easy because there are infinite number of these numbers. I mean, I cannot really specify that for a is equal to 55 and b is equal to 56, it's this. For a is equal to, let's say, 57.5, and b is equal to 58.77, it's something else, etc. I cannot describe my distribution in these terms. So, the now, now we have a, a very important problem. We have to find out how to um, describe this probability in a simple and yet sufficient way, so I can determine this for any a and b. Now, before doing that, let me just make another analogy. Let's say you're driving certain distance from point A to point B. Now, uh, obviously you're driving with different speed, right? So, now, if there is a question, how much did you drive from time T1 to time T2? Well, how can I answer that question uh, in, in a, a, a relatively simple form? Using what, basically? So I need certain knowledge, and obviously, if I am driving, it's not such an easy thing, even if you do have all these uh, instruments on your panel, you cannot really mark every time uh, interval what exactly has been covered as far as the distance is concerned, right? So here, to help you with this, you have odometer, right? Odometer gives you basically your mileage or whatever kilometrage, whatever units you are using for any specific moment. And let's just assume that your odometer is absolutely precise, which means whenever you look at the odometer, it gives you exact um, distance which you have covered. More than that, let's just make such an odometer which puts it in some kind of a functional specification. So you have a function which is equal to your um, odometer uh, reading at moment t. Odometer at moment t. Now, if you have this particular function, and this is the function which you can basically put into a computer or whatever else, you can even graphic uh, graphically represented. Is that function, which seems to be like a simple thing, just one function of one argument, right? Is this sufficient to answer the question how much has been covered from any moment t1 to any moment t2? Well, absolutely. It's very easy. It's just function of t2. That's how much we have covered at t2. Let's just assume that t2 is uh, later than t1 minus how much was covered up to t1 and that gives you how much was covered during this interval right and that's a very simple thing so you have one function which basically describes completely the whole um uh, road which which you, which you have uh, driven along um, and it's sufficient to answer the question how much did you really drive from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock, or from 1.30 to 2.30, or from 9 o'clock in the morning to 9 o'clock at night, whatever. So any question of that kind can be answered using just one relatively simple function of one argument. 
how much was covered, what's my odometer actually reading at any moment t. So if this function is given, then you can answer all these questions. In exactly similar way, we will do, uh, we will solve the similar problem with probabilities. Namely, we will introduce a function which we will call a, a, a cumulative distribution function, which is a function of one particular argument. Let's use argument x. And this is the probability of our function, uh, our random variable c, to be less than x. Now, in our case with the tennis balls, now obviously if x is 50, what's the probability of our random variable weight of the ball to be less than 50? Zero. We have already agreed that all the balls are from 50 to 60. So less than 50 is zero. What's my probability of 60? It's one. Because it's definitely not greater than 60, so everything is less than 60. Or equal, but it doesn't really matter because we have agreed that the probability to get any specific value, like 60, is zero anyway. And now we can always tell that the probability uh, which we are looking for from a to b is f at b minus f at a. Let's say a is 55 and b is 57. So what's the probability of our uh, tennis ball to weigh between uh, 55 and 57? Well, that's probability to be less than 57. Now this is the probability to be less than 55 and we have to um, subtract it because we are not interested in whatever is less than 55. We are interested only in greater or equal than 55. And that's why we have subtracted. Probability is a measure. Measure is an additive function. So the probability to be this is 50, this is 60, this is 55, this is 57. So the probability to be within this interval is the probability to be within this interval minus probability to be in this interval. It's exactly like the length or a weight or anything or any other measure. So this is how we can use our cumulative uh, distribution function. So this is a definition of this function and it's defined for any x by the way. It's defined for any real x. It can be less than 50 or it can be greater than 60 or I can say is that for every x which is less than 50 or equal to 50 uh, this function is equal to 0, right? So let's just draw a, a graph of this function. So it's defined for every x now if this is my 50 and this is my 60 yeah forget about the scaling obviously so what happens our function is definitely equal to 0 before before 50 and our function is definitely equal to 1 for every x which is greater than 60 because the probability uh, uh, to be less than 60 is uh, 1, 100 percent. Now in between it's whatever it is but what I would like to say that it's monotonically non-decreasing function because the greater the x is obviously the greater the probability is because again the probability is a measure. If I increase the x the probability to be let's say it's x plus d. So the probability to be uh, to, uh, c to be less than x plus d would actually be broken into two. This is x, this is x plus d. So this is 50, this is 60. So the probability to be within this interval is equal to the probability to be within this interval, which is f at x 
plus probability to be in this interval which probability is always greater or equal to zero so that's why we're always adding something increasing x we're always adding to the probability it's easier to be less than 57 right than uh, uh, less than 55 as long as we increase the boundary it's more um, uh, elementary events fall into this category so the function is monotonic I'm not saying it's increasing I would say it's non decreasing and um, why uh, let me just address it a little later when I will talk about uh, discrete distributions so that's basically the function which is called cumulative distribution function for our random variable C all right now um, by the way if I would like to know something a little bit more a little bit more complex than this I can also do it because again probability is an additive measure right so for instance I would like to know the probability of um, a1 b1 uh, or uh, a2 b2 where a1 b1 a2 b2 so these are non-intersecting um, values well obviously again the probability is additive function this is or these are uh, completely non-intersecting events so there are no elementary events which are common and that's why this probability is equal to sum of these two probabilities and the first one is equal to f of b1 minus f of a1 where this is the cumulative distribution function and the second which we have to add would be f of b2 minus f of a2 right so the function uh, f the cumulative distribution function is completely sufficient to describe the behavior of our random variable now what does it mean to describe the behavior well that basically means that we have to really find out what's the probability of this random variable to be in any particular um, range of values and this the an uh, this question is answered by uh, the cumulative distribution function right so that's a little bit more complex but we can always find it out now uh, just one particular example of um, uh, cumulative distribution function is called uniform distribution so let me just talk about this just one uh, little example um, now let's assume that again you have this tennis ball um, example the weight is from 50 to 60 definitely um, but um, the probability distribution is proportional to the range between the values so the greater the b minus a the greater the probability with the same coefficient so let's say this is k b minus a where k is some number whatever the number is now obviously if we are talking about 50 and 60 uh, and we want uh, 60 minus 50 which is the entire interval uh, to have the probability of 1 it means that the k should be in this case uh, 60 minus 50 it stands so it should be 1 tenth so let's assume that this is where 50 minus a b 60 okay so let's assume that our probability is proportional now is it unreasonable it's perfectly reasonable I mean the, the wider the interval obviously the, the, gre the greater the probability should be right that that's kind of obvious so uh, to assign it proportionally means you know something quite natural it's called uniform distribution of the values of this random variable in between the maximum and minimum um, values which we can take so from 50 to 60 it's uniformly distributed 
there is the same probability, let's say, to find the value between 50 and 51 as between 57 and 58, as between 55 and, 50 and 56, because the length of this and this and this is equal to 1, right? Or any other similar example. So, this is basically the function. Now I can say that my f of x is equal to 1 tenths x minus 50, right? If b is x, a is basically 50, because that's the minimum. So that's my distribution function. And it's defined only when x is from 50 to 60. Now, if x is um, if x is less than 50, then the function equals to 0. And this function is equal to 1 for all x greater than 60. So that's a complete definition of our function. Now let's um, have a graph of this function. So again, 50, 60, 0 here, one here, and here, between 50 and 60, it's linear, right? It's linear function. It's equal to 0 at x equal to 50, uh, and it's equal to 60 minus 50, which is 10 divided by 10, which is 1, which is here. So it's a straight line. So that's the graph of uniform distribution uh, on the uh, between the values 50 and 60 in this particular case. All right. All right. So this is the uniform distribution of random variable on a segment between certain values. There is no such thing as a uniform distribution on the entire line. I mean, because it's in infinite. We cannot really have this point in infinity and this point in negative infinity and positive infinity. It doesn't really work. So uniform distribution is always on a finite segment. Now, there might be uh, examples of um, uh, cumulative distribution, which is non-zero on an entire line. It's something like this. You asymptotically go to zero here, then at a certain moment you rise and asymptotically go to one. So this type of function. It's still monotonically increasing. Uh, something like a normal uh, distribution would have a graph like this, because it's basically defined uh, any value can be taken, but the, uh, uh, the, the more you are uh, deviating from, from the middle, from the median distribution, the less probability to get into that area. So that would be something like this. And now let me just mention one more thing. You see, the cumulative distribution is really a relatively universal um, tool to uh, analyze the, the random variable and its universality uh, is that it's not only applicable to uh, variables, random variables with uh, continuous distribution, but also uh, to discreetly distributed random variables. And here how, here's how we can do it. Let's consider some example. For instance, uh, you have a dice. Now, dice is a model of a random variable which takes value 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, with probability 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, 1, 6, and 1, 6. Right? Now, I would like to, again, use my apparatus of cumulative distribution to 
describe the probability of this c to be less than x. Let's just think about this function, how it's supposed to look like. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What's the probability to be less than 1? Obviously 0, right? So the function is equal to 0 here. Not including the end point. Now, what's the probability to be between 1 but less than 2. So 1, c, less than 2. So it's basically only 1, because 2 we did not really take here, so it's only 1, which is 1, 6. So the function starts at 1, at 1, 6 here, and goes for every x, for every x between 1 and 2, it, it, it goes horizontal, it does not change the value, right? not including the point 2. At point 2, what's the probability to have 2, which is equal to 2, 6, right? So it's here, and it goes up to, up to the point 3. So that's the probability of our uh, C to be uh, less than 3. Now, what's the probability, and, and greater than or equal to 2. Now, what's the probability to be, to be greater or equal to 3 but less than 4. Well, obviously that's 4 fifths, and then 5 fifths, etc. Uh, 6, I mean, not, six, not fifths, 6. So that's 4, and that's 5. And that includes this, and from this it's 1. 1, 6, 2, 6, 3, 6, 4, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, oh, then 6, one more. And this goes to infinity on x. So this is 5, 6, and this is 6, 6, which is 1. So that's the graph of our function um, which is a cumulative distribution of the random variable with discrete values. Now in this case, as you see, function is not monotonically increasing, it's monotonically non-decreasing, right? Because during this and this and this period for x, it just stays constant. So, my point is that cumulative function is really a universal function to describe the behavior of any random variable, discrete and continuous. And that's why it's very convenient in this particular case. And it's always, it always exists, so to speak. So, for any random variable, we always can construct this type of a function. Um, and the knowledge of this function is sufficient to basically describe the complete distribution of probabilities of any random variable. And complete means that we can actually answer the question, what's the probability of this particular random variable to be between this and this, or between this and this, or this and this, etc., etc. So, all questions of this type, all events, if you wish, related to the behavior of our random variable, all these problems are answerable using one cumulative function, cumulative distribution function. Okay, basically that's all I wanted to discuss right now. And um, I do suggest you to go to the unisor.com and read the, con uh, the, the notes for this lecture. It's always useful. It's like a textbook basically. Whenever you have uh, listen to the lecture. It's always good to read the same material again, um, just to refresh your memory. And uh, if you would like, I definitely recommend you to register on this site because it will uh, allow you to take exams, which is al always useful. You can take any exam any number of times just for like self-checking procedure. 
that's it for today thank you very much and good luck